Hi, and welcome to the next section in this course. In this section, we're going to continue to dig into hands-on API testing, but up until now, we've been looking at static data. So we've been looking at get calls, calls that read data that's there but don't change anything. In this section, we're going to look at changing data. So we're going to look at post, put, and delete calls and see what happens when we change the data on our service. So as you can imagine, this gives us a whole new set of testing challenges. Now we give API users the ability to modify something on our service, and so we want to make sure that they can't do so in a harmful way. There are, of course, two main ways that people can harm our app through bad post calls. The first way is malicious users. We'll talk a little bit about security testing in your API later in this course, but that's probably a full course in itself. The second way, though, is for users accidentally doing the wrong thing. For example, what happens if a user sends their data in the wrong format or if they try to overwrite data that's already in the system? There are many things that could go wrong with post calls, and so in this video we're going to look at how we can test post calls. Let's take a look at a real example of this. So I have a local application here that we'll use for demonstration purposes. And for this application, we can pretend that it's kind of managing some blog posts. So let's start with just a get call to the blog post URL. We'll send that, and we can see we get back a couple of sample blog posts here. So now let's copy this, because we're going to need, when we do a post, we need parameters. We need a body parameter. So let's change this to post. And now we have the body tab available here. So let's go to that, and let's actually put in raw data, and then we'll call it JSON. So the data that we have here in our API is JSON formatted. So we'll use that JSON option in Postman to specify it. And we can see here, this is the inputs based on the get call that the post call takes, or at least that this blog post URL produces. So we have an ID, we have a title, a body, and then a profile ID that links it to which profile created this. So for the first thing here, let's just try a few things. Let's get rid of the title here and see what happens. So we'll get rid of that and we'll send this post request and we'll see what happens. So we send that request, insert failed, duplicate ID. Now that's because we're sending the ID here. So we're sending an ID of one, but that ID already exists in the system. And a post call is for creating new requests. So we can't use an existing ID in the system. So let's just try removing this. Let's see what happens if we don't have an ID in here. Let's send this call again. We scroll down and we succeeded. Now we probably should have changed the body on this since now we have two bodies that are the same, but we can see that it succeeded. However, there's no name field here. So if having a name or a title for our blog post was important for business reasons, we would want to check that in the API and we would want the API to not allow us to send a post request with insufficient information. So this is one kind of test that we can do with post requests is make sure that it requires the things that are required and it checks for the existence of existing IDs so that we can only create new things. All right, so now let's try it. And let's just see if we can explicitly specify our ID. So we'll put the ID back in and we'll give it an ID of five because the next one would be four, right? We had an ID of three here. So the next one will be four, but we'll say, no, we're gonna skip four and we'll do five. And let's just give it a name as well so that we have a properly formatted. So let's just say test. All right and we'll put a comma and we'll send this. So if we scroll down here, we can see that it created a blog post with an ID of five as we specified. So it didn't increment the next one, it used the one that we specified. So now let's try a few interesting values and let's see if we can kind of break something here. So in programming, there's an interesting value called double max and that's the biggest number that can be stored in a double variable type. So let's try that number here. We'll say one, e to the 308 and let's send that request and see what happens okay looks like it created it fine so let's see what happens if we go bigger than that okay 1e to the 309 let's send that and see what happens 
Now we can see down here, it created the post for us, but it set the ID to null. Now, if we were testing this application, we'd really want to dig in and start exploring some issues that might come from having a null ID in our database. And actually, in this application, there would be a number of issues. But I'm going to leave the example here for now. I think it establishes the point that we want to check for invalid inputs or unlikely inputs because someone malicious or accidentally might put stuff like this into an API. So we want to check and see how our API handles these kinds of things. And then, of course, when we're testing an API, we need to consider many other things like security or performance, making sure that calculated values are properly recalculated when something changes, and so many other considerations. But the point of what I'm doing here is to give you a bit of a glimpse, to give you a bit of a feeling of what all goes into testing post calls so that when you're looking at it, you can think carefully about how your particular API works and what inputs you might want to do. So as with all parts of testing, you need to explore and investigate and continue to learn.